Do you suspect your church might be becoming a progressive Christian church? This is madness. It's madness, I tell you, for the love of God! Hi beautiful people! Today we're discussing author and apologist Elisa Childers. You may know her as the woman that pops up every time you search progressive Christianity. I am happy to report that on that search, me and my new friend Colby Martin come up first, but we're sandwiched between Ben Shapiro's site The Daily Wire, Elisa Childers, and Ali B. Stuckey, which are all videos or articles vilifying the progressive movement. That said, I thought it was important to speak on Elisa because as people on the deconstruction or reconstruction journey, I don't want you to feel afraid. And all three of these sources are attempting to bring more fear and doubt to you on this earnest journey of discovery. And I believe it's because they fear and doubt the progressive movement themselves, which does not have to be your problem. So I hope this video will bring you peace as we sift through Elisa's problems with progressivism. And Elisa, I DM'd you because I'd love to talk to you instead of about you in the future. Before we begin, please keep pre-ordering my memoir, On Her Knees. It comes out on April 6th, and I just finished recording the audio version. And please pick up some God is Grey merch or consider joining the Patreon community. Past two months, we've had exclusive Patreon Zoom parties, and they've honestly been so much fun. Last thing I'll say, Justin Co and I had a beautiful interview when I was in Oregon for Jacqueline Glenn's wedding. If anyone is curious about my story or wants to learn how to better align their sexuality and spirituality, you will enjoy this interview, which I will link below. So, the brief history of Elisa Childers is that she was a singer in the Christian band Zoe Girl. So we toured all over the country. And I actually relate to her so deeply when she talks about her connection to divinity from a young age. I've loved the Bible as early as I could read and write. I would go to church and I would do the music and worship and I'd feel the goosebumps and yeah. you know and I, I associated that with the presence of God that's what made it real to me after her tour with Zoe girl it seems that Elisa dipped her toe into a progressive church after seeing the worst of evangelicalism I kind of saw Christians at their worst and the okay. church at its worst sometimes not always but you know we had some bad experiences and there were things about evangelical culture that were bothering me. Now, let's be real. In many cases, pain is what compels us to deconstruct or to find progressive Christianity or to even press in and seek the truth. And this is the reason many of us are generalized as butthurt or bitter, because we woke up to the toxicity of evangelicalism, be it through failed marriages, failed leaders, modesty culture, rape culture, misogyny. I just don't know why those men, are, you know, <laughs> Colonization, spiritual abuse, and financial abuse. You need to send in 35,000. If you do not write that P.O. box and you do not call that toll-free number, your dream will die. I don't know what Elisa experienced on tour, but I'm assuming it's a combination of these things. My friend Lauren Deliri, formerly of the Christian band Love Collide, talks about being overly sexualized, judged for never being good enough, pure enough, modest enough, and how that Christian music culture can wear you down. Whatever the case may be, after tour, Elisa describes attending a church that addressed these concerns. This church that we were at was kind of addressing those same concerns, and it just felt so authentic. Here's where it gets sticky for Elisa. At a certain point, she describes being invited to a small group where she felt there was a bait and switch. The pastor invited me to be a part of a study group that was very small, very exclusive. And it was in the context of this group that he revealed that he was an agnostic. It almost seems deceptive. Right? It almost does, doesn't yeah. it? From here, Elisa's journey leads her to apologetics. I'm familiar with apologetics because my dad loves it. Christian apologetics is rooted in the Greek word meaning verbal defense. It's a branch of Christian theology that defends Christianity against objections. I truly believe the main distinction between apologetics and progressive Christianity is that progressive Christians are simply saying, hey, these beliefs or positions you are defending happen to be hurting people, 
profoundly. Not all Christian theology, that's why we still identify as Christian, but the points of contention we've been arguing over, like abortion, racism, and LGBTQ plus issues. And my greatest frustration with Elisa is that she seemed to have an experience with a pastor she deemed progressive, even though he self-identified as agnostic, and is now considered an expert among conservative voices who are already determined to debunk minimize and misunderstand the progressive Christian movement, like Ali B. Stuckey, who had Elisa as a guest. My first issue with this interview is that neither woman grants validity to either this movement or to our personal faith. They, they fancy themselves humble when really a lot of times they're just confused and they want people to be confused along with them, I think. Christianity is going to give you a Jesus. It's going to give you a God, but it's not a Jesus who can save you. It's progressive a Jesus Christianity. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Progressive Christianity. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You now we're back to the issue I originally had with Girl Defined, where I tried to express it's not our differences that hurt. It's the fact that conservatives tell us we don't know the real Jesus. We are not real Christians. And before we dive, dive in, let's address the issue of being kind. My interactions, generally speaking, with atheists and in my interactions with progressive Christians, um, it's it's much harder to interact with progressive Christians because they, they will go so quickly to the mocking and making fun and just sort of brutal, just meanness. mean. <laughs> so mean. I'm sorry, excuse me, Mrs. Stuckey. You're one of the most unkind conservative voices I know. Change the world by posting a black square. If you wrap something in sarcasm or condescension, it is still unkind. Here, Ali constructed a fake interview where the sole purpose seemed to be making AOC look like an idiot. Do you have any knowledge whatsoever about how our political system works. Mm. Yikes. And Ali often makes a mockery of things that she frankly doesn't understand or doesn't want to understand. An example of this is in her fake ad where she mocks progressives. Religious people are idiots. Democrats would much rather you sacrifice yourself on the altar of progressivism. Obviously, people can be mean for the sake of being mean, but if you are receiving a lot of cruelty, it's worth checking in and making sure you're not leading with cruelty yourself. So? So that's against the rules, and you can't sit with us. Any woman who disagrees with us on this is a self-hating, stupid bimbo. You can't sit with us! I've talked before about where I've lacked kindness in the past. I am not perfect, obviously. But I've learned that cruelty, shame, and mocking drive more division and hate, whereas education and listening to each other is key. It's golden. It's beautiful. And here comes the hot <laughs> debate. Who knows the real Jesus? I myself have never felt more aligned with Jesus, more alive, more joyful than I do now as a progressive Christian. But unlike these women, I will not accuse them of not knowing the same Jesus as me. I will, however, accuse Lisa of not really knowing about progressive Christianity. The first major thing Elisa gets wrong is how she presents progressive doctrine. So Jesus' death was a sacrifice uh, that paid the price for our sin, that he was punished in our place. And these are all terms in progressive Christianity that are rejected, and they, they'll call that cosmic child abuse. Elisa, I'm a progressive, and I do believe in Jesus' death and resurrection. So your generalization is incorrect. Here's the thing, and conservatives may hate this. Progressives don't have a church or a set of doctrinal beliefs. This is a movement. You may find a progressive church, but I don't have one, and most of the progressives I know don't have one either. We are simply a large community of people realizing the evangelical doctrine we were given never aligned with our true faith. We are the prodigal sons and daughters who had to stay away from our church homes because when our concerns were brought up to our church families, we were dismissed. I watched my LGBTQ brothers and sisters get treated like second-class citizens from whom the church would take their tithes but not allow them to teach or preach or lead or have equal rights in general. If there's one sacrament in progressive Christianity, it's deconstruction. You go through your deconstruction and that's part of being a progressive Christian. No, this is wrong, Elisa. The sole reason I speak out is so that we can all 
share a faith that doesn't have to be deconstructed for its harmful doctrines. I want to restore the church as a safe place for Christians because for too long we have been harboring the abusers and abusing the seekers. That said, I am one progressive Christian and I can only speak for myself here because the point of progressive Christianity is that we are inclusive and that we honor people on their journeys. If you're scared of eternal damnation, it may be scary to hear someone say they don't believe in Christ's resurrection. But the point of the progressive space is to allow for those questions. Because I promise you, there are conservatives in your circle who are asking the same questions, but they're not allowed to speak them out loud. And it's honestly just lazy to threaten them with hell and tell them to move on. Now, y'all, listen to how these real-life heavy concerns are minimized in this conversation. What you often find in progressive Christianity is that the title or the name Jesus gets slapped on whatever cause they they as a person think is worthy. Environmentalism, socioeconomic reform, green energy, uh, LGBT inclusion. From my view, biblically, the burden of proof rests on Elisa and Ali here, not me. I can show you where Jesus commands us to take care of the poor and needy, or what progressives would call socioeconomic reform and universal health care. At the beginning of Genesis, God charges us to be good stewards of the earth, aka environmentalism and green energy. These political policies are not going to be foolproof. They will need to be worked out and we are not idolizing them like Jesus himself, but we are reading the Bible with our own eyes and seeing, dang, these policies really seem to mirror and reflect things that Jesus called us to be, that God called us to be. In fact, you'll hear progressive Christians say that. I couldn't believe in a God who, and then fill in the blank. So essentially, whatever I wouldn't do, I couldn't serve a God that would do that. So God, I'm more moral than God. Why are you vilifying us for seeing these as areas of importance? And maybe you have a different approach or a different way of getting there, but don't demonize us. Don't make us sound like the enemy. As for LGBTQ plus inclusion, no, we are not saying we can't believe in a God who is not as moral as us. We are reading our own Bibles and seeing that God is good, God is love, we are made in God's image. So when Elisa asks us to fill in, fill in the blank, I couldn't believe in a God who claims to love us unconditionally, but will force a sexual ethic that causes people to commit suicide. That makes no sense to me your Christian sister. On this and many subjects, the accusation from Elisa and Ali is that progressive Christians live in moral relativity. The whole concept of deconstruction is rooted in postmodern relativism. So it's based on the idea that you know, truth can't really be known. Uh, if objective truth exists, none of us have access to it. Again, progressive Christian here. And to me, it's obvious that objective truth exists. To me, that truth is God, is divinity. And Ali is super anti-gray. You gotten this, you know, you're you're young, you shouldn't be so sure of these beliefs. You'll realize that the world is messy, that it's gray. But if you don't concede that we live in a very complicated and nuanced world, then we might not be living on the same planet. The elephant in the room of this entire conversation is that Ali and Elisa simply don't like the conclusions that we are coming to as progressive Christians. Our main, main difference is not that you are Christians and we are not. The main difference is how we view inclusivity and spiritual abuse and how we are processing the messy, complicated history of our religion. Unfairly, multiple times, both women refer to agnosticism. When you deconstruct and you don't have any foundation on which to, to build any kind of faith except for moral relativism, you end up in this sea of agnosticism. Which is the belief that, quote, human reason is incapable of providing sufficient rational grounds to justify either the belief that God exists or the belief that God does not exist, which is a blatant misrepresentation of us again. Not agnostic, we're Christian. We're simply looking at the elephants of religion from different angles. Perhaps I can appreciate that Ali and Elisa are both 
clearly devoted to the faith and spreading what they believe to be the good news. But we progressive Christians are asking you to stop making assumptions about us and start talking to us. We could learn a lot from each other. We are asking you to listen. God is great community. In a future video, I'd be happy to dive further into Elisa's doctrinal beliefs about progressivism and debunk them or confirm them because she's got a lot of things right, but she's got a lot of things wrong. And that's it. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, donate to my Patreon or Venmo if you can. Pick up your copy of On Her Knees and your God is Grey merch. I love you all so much. God bless.